Hello, everybody. Can you all hear me okay? Good? Oh. All right, how about now? Is that better? Good? All right. I'll try not to move. <laughs> Um, so welcome everybody to the Insights Breakout. We're really excited to have you here today. I have some amazing guests with me. I'm Amanda, I'm from the Reputation team. Um, so I'm really honored to bring you know, our great clients that we have here. We have Robbie Hamill from Quadreal coming from Canada. And we have Becca Hallisey here from Nashville from Graystar. And Rajrupa Nandi who is on our product team. Um, so really excited to have this group here today to walk through the hidden insights that you can find from your data feedback. And we all know with our you know, day jobs, there's a lot of insights that fulfill that use case, but we also want to start uncovering when you see a piece of information that can fuel another part of the business or how can things you know, go beyond the day job and start to become more strategic. Um, so just to give us a quick pulse on who we have here in the audience, how many of you would say you're more of that daily user in the platform and analyzing the, your feedback? Awesome. And then our senior <coughs> leaders and people who are informed by the data? Okay. So we have a good mix. Thank you. Um, alrighty. So I want to dive in and let each of our wonderful guests introduce themselves a little bit more. Robbie, if you want to start us off. Sure. Thank you, Amanda. It's awesome to be here. Thank you guys so much. Um, so, uh, Quadro Property Group uh, is a uh, global real estate owner, uh, operator, and investor uh, with $67 billion in assets and administration around the world. Um, that being said, my role and my purview is over the uh, Canadian residential portfolio, where we currently have 11,000 uh, rental apartments. My role specifically as National Strategic Marketing Manager is everything marketing and everything online, so um, online reputation is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you. And Becca? Um, I'm Becca. I'm with Graystar. We are the global leader in rental housing. We, in the U.S., oversee about 2,600 locations, and then we own, manage, uh, kind of anything we can for our clients um, across the world. So we have locations or communities in the UK, Spain, potentially Canada, who knows, maybe one day we're competing against each other. Um, and my team oversees on the marketing operations side how we order, onboard, offboard, and manage the products on the marketing side that we support at Graystar. So reputation.com being one of those products that our entire portfolio utilizes on a daily basis. Glad to have you. And Raj. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Raj Rupa Nandi. Um, I'm a product management lead here at Reputation. Um, so as part of my portfolio, I lead the Insights product. And this is Experience Insights and Competitive Intelligence. Um, also reports and dashboards, um, the mobile product, um, as well as our actions product. So um, I have a small but mighty team of product managers who work very hard to make these products great for our end users. That's awesome. Thank you, Raj. Yeah, so um, one of the golden nuggets that I picked up yesterday, Doug Zarkin mentioned that data is essentially nothing if you don't do anything with it. And so we all know that we have a lot of data that we have the options to do things with. So I really want to cover from both ends of the spectrum again, what can you do today and what can you start thinking about differently? So I encourage you, um, even though we have great representation here from the property management vertical, think with that open box and say, okay, it's happening and it's working there. How could I maybe draw that into my own industry? So to start us off, um, I'd love to just start the conversation and talk about how your organization views reputation. So how did you know, that seed get planted? And then how has it evolved to be you know, data-centric and customer-centric? Who wants to start? I can go first. Okay. Um, as Greg Benson shared earlier today, we started our journey back in 2013 with reputation, so 10 years so far. And we started out with just the review side, and now it is expanded to reviews, social media, business listings. We also utilize a product internally within Rep.com called Actions. I'm not sure how familiar people are with that, but we're always trying to find ways to trigger people to take steps 
in the review management, the social side, and just overall the customer experience. Um, and it's in every aspect of what we talk about. It, the dashboard is utilized for us every single day on a regular basis. All of our on-site team members have access to it. It's a simple login and they can actually see what they're looking for for their community when it comes to those areas. So they can have those meaningful conversations with their clients mm -hmm. on why we're doing some of these actions, um, especially in the review response world because that is the most prevalent and people are always looking at how we as a company respond to anything online. Yeah, I think, um, so we started working with Rep a couple years ago now and for us, I think getting access to that data and, the, and those insights in such a usable, you know, easy to work with format was really, was really critical. And I think over time, um, that's one of the things we really focused on is, is what are the best ways we can actually get the company super deeply invested in our online reputation? Because, mm -hmm. you know, um, I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna talk about scale, but you know, <laughs> having multiple locations, um, it's tough. It's tough to make things you know, consistent. It's tough to get everybody on board. Everybody's got different levels of understanding, uh, of familiarity with what's going on online. Um, and so one of the things, we, we just we try to have like a really multi-touch approach. Uh, mm -hmm. The marketing team is solely responsible for the online reputation, but we, there's very few of us. We have to collaborate very deeply with operations. And so our relationships and all those touch points are critical. So you know, we do things that are kind of on the fly and ad hoc, um, like one thing we try to do, it's difficult to do because we get a lot of reviews, but one thing we try to do, if I, if I see a great review come across my desk, I'll you know, forward that to um, the community team, to the property team, and include their management, and just mm -hmm. like say kudos, this is awesome. Um, and that just has such a positive impact, and it really does a lot to bring it to the fore. So we do things like that. We have online reputation awards, which we do. Um, we give out a couple of those annually. Uh, that helps to keep things like top of mind in a really positive, celebratory way. Um, and then we also have, you know, like more structured uh, ways of keeping things top of mind mm -hmm. and, and making it mainstream. Um, you know, national updates um, monthly where we're talking about uh, our aggregate performance of the portfolio. We're talking about leaderboards, most improved uh, communities, uh, best overall, those that are doing the best job at outranking their competition. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah. I like that we started really big and talked about the evolution because now I want to follow up and say how were each of those actions cultivated within your organization, right? Out of the gates, it wasn't all of those things. So you've been working with reputation and you know, other tools to support that journey over a long period of time. But you know, what's your structure in the organization like? You know, was there a strong effort from the top throughout or were you guys you know, really advocating you know, and growing up that way? For us, it really started with just general customer service and reviews because 10 years ago, that was all that was really out there and becoming the forefront. So that is really when Google started doing the Yelp or the Google reviews. Yelp came into the picture at that time and blew up. So reviews really started it all. And then it's slowly growing to, hey, reviews are a part of the feedback story, but so are social media comments. They're essentially a review if you think about it, and so on and so forth. So as it's just kind of evolved in our world, unfortunately, we've had to evolve with it, um, and it's just led us to needing more tools to make things easier for our on-site teams, our marketers to see what information is being shared, and how we can communicate all of that to our clients who aren't in a dashboard on a regular basis, or necessarily in the space interacting with the customers and what they're saying, but we need that great report that breaks everything down in a word cloud or just in nice little stats, whatever we need to do. So follow up on that question, um, you know, uh, what are your top categories of feedback um, that you generally get? That's, that's a big question. <laughs> Can I go get my computer and pull the dashboard, please? <laughs> Um, it really just breaks down. We have so many regions and different clients. Um, I, I don't really have an answer for you because we get feedback across the board from noise complaints to, hey, I can't pay my rent on time and I need some type of assistance in that way or just full spectrum. So sky's okay. the limits. It's just figuring out how can we get them to the right person to help them is the key and that's what we look for. I would just echo that. I'd say even we see huge variation in what is like really topical and coming up again and again and again across our properties. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it really varies by market. You know, if, if rents are super high in a given market, um, maybe that's going to be talked about more, especially if it's rent controlled. Um, if it's during COVID, you know, noise complaints, like all, all, the, all that kind of stuff. Right? So it's almost like seasonal, and it depends upon the market. It, it really comes down to the feedback can be anything, but how can we get them to the right person to resolve their issue? And that's the key for customer satisfaction. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting too, though, when you're approaching that process, you're not assuming that it's all gonna be the same everywhere. And so it does keep us on the toes a little bit of, you know, you can't draw these assumptions. The data can help inform those actual, you know, what's actually happening. Um, that's awesome. What would you say, like who, Maybe did you did get caught by surprise in your organization? Is there a team that you know started to benefit from this that you didn't you know foresee right away, um, or how did you? A second part of that is how did you start embracing other members of the team to say this is valuable? Mm. Uh, I can go first on that one. I think so. When we before we onboarded with Rep, um, we did a bit of a, an audit of all of our communities, all of our properties. Uh, just looking at what reviews they had, what was being said, and mm -hmm. just get a sense of you know what, what's our need kind of going into this. And one of the things we saw, we just had a handful of communities that had what looked like at first glance, you know, great online review uh, or great online reputation because they're sitting there with a 4.5 star rating on Google. Looks great. The, uh, competitor down the road has like a 4.2. We're in good shape. And then what happened was when we onboarded. Um, we had a couple of great kind of aha moments where, um, and I love the, uh, the reputation score, so uh, I can talk about that for a while. <laughs> but um, the reputation score was super you know, informative out of the gate, as was, I mean, through the reputation score, comparing to competitors. Because what we saw at these communities is that, um, yeah, maybe we were at a 4.5 and they were at a 4.2 or whatever it was, but you know, our properties hadn't had a review in like almost two years. Mm. <laughs> Um, they only had like a handful of reviews. And so it immediately brought to the fore for a lot of the folks internally, you know, that you really need to take this holistic picture. You need to look overall at the overall online reputation health, mm -hmm. which, I mean, it's, you know, kind of common sense, I guess, but at the time that was kind of an organizational block. It was a, a hurdle we had to get past. And so it was critical, especially when down the road, as I said, the competitor might have 4.2, but they had a steady flow of positive reviews coming mm -hmm. in the door. And so that actually is a lot more valid and a lot more meaningful the prospect, whereas compared to our properties, um, where it was like they might as well not have anything. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's so old and there's so little feedback. Sure. I like that. I think for us, the operations teams and marketing teams use reputation a lot over the years. And what's been a key change and has brought so many other departments is, is the competitor side. So our communities can put their own individual property competitors in, but we do utilize the competitor dashboard. A lot of what was shared today, we've been utilizing for a little while, and we've been able to compare our top competitors to our individual assets and build a really solid story when we may be going after business opportunities or just trying to have the right conversations as to why a change at a community needs to happen because of the reputation mm -hmm. side of things. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good segue then into our second major topic that we want to talk about is turning those insights into meaningful actions. So we've already alluded to a few um, that are you know super awesome to tee up. Let's dive into rep score, Robbie, um, especially in your intro, yeah. um, you know how you got to the place of recognizing properties and having an award ceremony to the very beginning of kind of setting the stage of this is what's going on in the landscape. We have a metric to measure that. So I'd love to hear how you've turned all of that into external and internal action. Right, so uh, as mentioned, we love the rep score mm -hmm. because uh, it, it is that holistic picture. And so one of the things we've done is we've got this online uh, reputation award, which is great. Um, what else? So um, it's really important for us to be constantly uh, seeing improvement over time. Um, you know, and all the things that go into the rep score, we want to be increasing our uh, positive review volume. We want to be uh, you know, hitting or achieving our performance benchmark of four stars out of five. Um, every year since going live with reputation, we have hit that mark uh, or superseded it, which is great. Um, and we want to be outperforming our competitors. Uh, and so having access, we don't have access to the in-depth <laughs> competitive intelligence, but we Yet. Yeah, we, will. we talk about <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, and so I think, but what it really comes down to uh, is, is those insights. 
highlights in the experience uh, uh, portion of the dashboard where when we have those you know, connection points of operations, I connect with our operations directors all the time. Mm -hmm. We talk about communities that have a rep score that's below uh, 500 is our benchmark for that, to see what's going on um, and to discuss you know, what are the issues that are being highlighted um, because operations really, they're the ones that can, can take those insights and put them to work, right? Mm -hmm. So Robbie, on that, um, quick question on, um, you know, what is the follow-up action um, that's taken when you identify that there are, you know, certain locations where the rep score is below 500? Um, you know, you mentioned that you reach out to the operations director, and then how do you go about tracking progress in those locations? Yeah, good question. So we actually have quarterly recurring calls where I'll connect with every operations director to see, to see you know, um, uh, if there's anything that needs to be discussed. Um, and one of the things we do is we dig into to that rep score, right? It's, it's multifaceted. Yeah. So is the issue just that they're having a hard time drumming up reviews? Um, and if so, why? What's going on? You know, is there a construction or is there an infill project? Is there something going on? And so with that, I can't always directly sitting in my chair in the head office, I can't always, you know, mm -hmm. uh, directly impact. But what I can do is make sure that I do follow up. And, then, and we do that and I provide any support I can. If there is any marketing support that's required, um, maybe to provide you know, better communication or anything like that, often the issue is communication. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of staying on top of it, keeping in touch. Um, pretty proud of the rep the relationships that I have with the operations folks uh, because it's just so fruitful. You know? Yeah, and yeah. always helps to have a data-driven conversation because you can see the data right there as Definitely. to you know, yeah. why the rep score is suffering. Um, Becca, I'd love to dive in. I know when we were speaking a couple months ago as we were preparing for this, you said that you have a lot of internal benchmarks as well. So yes. I'd love to, if you could describe to us how you guys measure, how you define success and also how you measure that. Yeah, so we um, do have a couple of KPIs, of course, some of those are proprietary in terms of the actual number, but we look at the rep back score. We also really focus on response rate because people want to be responded to in a timely manner. And then that average star rating is pretty much where we, our, our bread and butter is in terms of kind of key metrics we hone in on and focus and have conversations behind. And that just allows us to help the onsite teams and marketers come up with the plan to improve or understand what the data is telling them um, so that they can make those changes. It's funny though, you have situations with a Google, for example, where they hold on to some positive reviews or just reviews in general that somebody may have posted for a couple months. We saw that during the pandemic and then they released it several months later. And it's, a lot, it's helping our teams understand that they have to look at that report daily and make decisions because they could have a review pop up from two months ago that they never even were able to resolve because it just actually got released on Google and they have to go back and fix it. So having those conversations and having people focus on response rate makes them have to look in the dashboard, respond to the reviews. And then they, I mean, we get emails all the time. This review is two, two years ago. Where did this come from? And we're like, that's Google for you. Like, we don't know. So it's kind of funny, but they know to a T now because they know they have to respond in a certain period of time. And if mm -hmm. a review from two years ago comes up, they kind of are like, is this gonna impact my response rate? So it's getting people in the dashboard. And then as Greg also shared earlier, uh, we actually have where bonuses are tied into some of our reputation management and customer satisfaction side, um, which is a new initiative and kind of the next step in our entire program. Mm -hmm. um, so has competitive intelligence helped in any way for you to like define the benchmarks around performance? Oh, absolutely. And when you're four times the size of some of your competitors, we have to find the right middle ground between what is a good benchmark because we are so much larger than a lot of competition. Um, so it's helping people understand even regionally who they compete against, how that coincides with some of the benchmarks we try to achieve. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, I'm gonna actually follow up on that question too because you mentioned outside um, the other locations. Mm -hmm. So you've empowered at your corporate level, but the empowerment has gone down to that location level specific to competitive. Would you dive into that? Sure. So um, we allow in the platform, we allow teams to add some of their direct competitors into the dashboard so they can actually see what's being said. 
comparing themselves to other, like somebody across the street from them. And it could even be another grace or property in some cases. So if there is a resonant experience that they need to achieve because across the street, somebody is doing everything they can for their residents, they can start actually seeing that information and how scores are fluctuating. Um, the other thing that we look at is looking at the reviews and the number of reviews coming in kind of can tell you if somebody hosted an event recently and maybe we need to step up our game in that sense or what can we potentially do on social media to get people excited um, about moving in with our to our community whatever those needs are um, by having that in the dashboard it gives them an extra set of tools that they didn't have at their hands before besides actually doing a Google search and taking the time to put their mm -hmm. own report together. Now they just click a button and they're right there and can download that report and share it on a client call or whatever they need. Mm -hmm. Something that I liked that both of you guys had touched on and I'll, I guess, round it out as a recap is you mentioned your team has a quarterly or a monthly and quarterly review that they can look forward to. So you've provided consistency and structure, but then they're also, I guess, empowered to think, okay, in anticipation, what's gonna show up here? How you described, you know, the review team or this other, the locations. You know, you can say, we want you to know who your competitors are, but when they start taking that onus on and, okay, I, I do know that this person is impacting me, then that two-way street, it feels as if that's where a lot of magic can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Raj, do you have anything that you want to circle um, back on this topic? I think I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm just going to flip side here. So um, the next thing that I think I want to dive into is fueling future success. So we talked, you know, a lot about things that help fulfill your current initiatives. Um, where are areas that you have found the insights allow you to be proactive? So for us, I would say it is understanding the trends that are kind of happening in the digital space. We all know that that's constantly moving. And so if we can find the short-term trends and potentially start identifying long-term trends, we can start looking for products or tools or strategies, building those out to allow us to ad adapt and be agile. We are a huge company. We can't just make a shift overnight. We have clients to talk to. We have mm -hmm. on-site teams to train. So by us constantly looking at that and using tools like Insights to see how things are changing, it allows us to start preparing for things that we weren't expecting. It's kind of like digital disaster planning is the way I like to look at it. So um, you're constantly having something change and how, is a, how a large organization can be agile and make a shift within two months is a big key factor and it's important to our clients that we identify those areas. I think one for us, uh, and I'm looking forward to being able to do this in a much more informed way soon, um, is around uh, you know, uh, differentiation from competition. Right at the moment we have the kind of the classic competitor report, competitor insights report, which is great because for us what it does is it flags you know, that this community is, is not leading their local competitors to that right now, and so let's dig in and find out why. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, um, uh, I mean, that's one of the ways that we're able to be proactive with the data. Um, I'm really looking forward to soon um, really being able to kind of do what you guys have been doing for a while, um, which is to put, uh, you know, super easy to leverage information in the hands of our leasing agents so that when they're having that conversation with the prospect, they have a really good understanding of differentiation, you know, what's, uh, whether it's something that we have, don't have or have, vice versa, you know, down the street, um, just to be able to help the leasing agent have that informed, intelligent conversation with the prospect. Um, that's one, way, one thing I'm really looking forward to. Lovely. Um, what is something in the short term that you guys are working towards and how data insights are really fueling that? I think I'd probably just say that same one again. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. In the short term for us, it's right now we're really focused on the action side of things. So training people to take initiative and notate what they did to help that person in a backend system. So if we get another call, we can actually start tracking how often that's happening and see if there's a overall kind of culture thing that's happening on site potentially. So that's, I think, the first step um, from a short-term perspective. But 
who knows, it could change, it changes every day for us sometimes, so. Would you say, um, I mean, especially, I mean, all industries were impacted, right? But with COVID and now we're coming out on the other side, right? That agility really mattered then. Would you say that your organizations had that before or are you, you know, carrying that momentum now after that learning experience? I would say we learned quick during that, but by having a tool like Insights with Rad.com, we were able to build language into the platform so we could see what other companies were doing and then we were able to adjust our strategy or provide support in different ways that we wouldn't have been able to do without a product like that. And the, what I kind of learned through all that is we can actually get things implemented pretty quick if we just ask for them, mm -hmm. um, which that's kind of the key. Like everyone is way more agile now. So it'll be fun as more initiatives change how products and vendors and their clients work together to make things happen faster, especially in this digital world, because mm -hmm. there's nothing like waiting for software updates to happen kind of right? a thing. <laughs> yeah. No, it is. It, I guess it's a two-way of the customer experience, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're so focused on our customers, but in a time like that, we're also a customer, and we need, you know, all of our partners to help support that. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. What about you, Robbie? You might have the same question for me. I was hoping you weren't going to ask me that. <laughs> No, I was curious, um, before COVID, or you know, would you say that you were agile before that, or are you carrying the momentum from you know, almost needing to be more agile? I mean, I think yes to both. Uh, I think we were reasonably agile before, um, but I think like, like everyone, I think there was, there was a need to be more on the ball um, because so much changing all the time, especially when, you know, across locations, across regions, mm -hmm. regulations were different. We have processes now in place where we can enact things quicker probably than we could have before. Sure. Yeah. And it sounds like spread the message throughout the organization quicker. All teams can get on board much faster. Yeah. Yep. Right. So did you end up creating any um, you know, custom dashboards or any reports just around you know, the data that you were seeing um, during the COVID period that you, you know, shared across your organization? For us, what COVID led to is us building out a customer survey on gracehair.com, so a direct form that then actually goes directly to whichever property was impacted versus having our small team of three, or really for a while it was just me, taking every social media post that we were getting and sending an email to the property to help resolve whatever that issue is. And that really came out of because so many people had so many questions during the pandemic of what do we do for this? What do we do for that? How do we handle this? We need help. And so it kind of led us to add a layer of customer service that we'd never had before at Graystar. Mm -hmm. That's actually efficient versus me emailing it every <laughs> single day. <laughs> right, right. How about you, Robbie? Um, so we have, I mean, it's not complex per se, but we have quite a, a, co a you know, combination of different reports that get sent out on a regular basis. So we actually didn't create anything custom uh, just for COVID because we kind of we had a pretty, pretty good coverage already where you know if there was an issue that was coming up and just said a million times in our reviews, that would be flagged very quickly um, and, and so on. So we didn't end up doing anything custom. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so one question, since we do have good representation here from the property management, I'm curious um, as we think about like the future of feedback, and that's the theme you know throughout. And Joe, it was interesting for me even to hear first that we don't believe that email and text you know might be around as a way of communication in the future. So I don't think we're going that far. But you know, with what you guys are looking at on a daily basis, and now you know thinking, okay, at the bigger picture, um, is there a trend that you're seeing in the industry that you know you're going to be faced with again for the next year or two? And we can always come back to that too. Um, but that's a question I want to you know circle back on. I mean, do you want to? I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Give me a second. Um, mm -hmm. um, I can, I can totally <coughs> jump on that. Yeah. Um, I think, and this is kind of everywhere, that there's just uh, an explosion of new technology and new things to pilot, new things to test. Um, now, Canada typically, uh, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I feel like Canada typically is a little bit behind the U.S. Yeah. in terms of multifamily. Um, so what we kind of benefit from is how things go in the States. You know, self editor is a great example things like that, uh, but that I think is continuing to happen, um, and all these different technologies are creating a ton of more 
data for us to work with. Um, so I think that's, I mean, a trend. I don't think it's a cop-out answer, but. It's yeah. not, no. I, I would say, like, in that same realm, the whole artificial intelligence mm -hmm. component is becoming the forefront for property management, I think, specifically, yeah. because it's not just AI can provide instant communication. It can do back-end technology that we've never had before that an on-site team member may have been responsible for, but we can't meet the SLAs that people want in their brain um, for a response. So it's responding to a review, but also responding to just a lead to set up a tour. So it's interesting to watch how AI is coming into mm -hmm. property management, but with that, there's so much regulation Mm -hmm. and opting in versus opting out and accessibility. There's a lot of factors that go into play that the property management space is behind in even in some of those areas. Mm -hmm. But I think AI is the next direction, which has been a common theme in a couple of the sessions. And I guess when that trend picks up more, you know, you would also want insights around mm -hmm. that whole exactly. experience. Yeah. So. Because you, <laughs> you have to build out AI answering questions that the common person would want to ask. Mm -hmm. So you need insights to build those questions correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good segue then with Raj. So um, being our director of product, she is you know looking ahead a couple years as well as delivering in the now. So she's had to be you know and get our team on board with um, you know moving some things up and then also looking ahead. So. I would love, Raj, if you could you know, talk to us now on this side of the house, how we're looking at the future. Sure. Um, so I'm going to start with competitive intelligence because you know, that was a highlight of the keynote that we had today. You know, Joe talked about it, Pranav talked about it, and now it's my turn to talk about it as a product <laughs> lead. Um, so in terms of competitive intelligence, um, it basically addresses uh, the two key questions that's the bedrock of our reputation platform. Uh, what are my competitors doing and what do I need to do about it? Um, so basically, you know, this is the place where you would want to find, uh, you know, how your brand stacks up against all the other brands that you're comparing or you're competing with. Um, so in terms of, uh, you know, what we have to offer as a competitive intelligence solution, um, I would love it if you guys, you know, got a demo somewhere. Uh, you know, feel free to reach out to your CSMs, and you know, we would love to give you a demo there. Uh, but basically, I want to highlight four key things um, that can basically answer questions um, around what your competitors are doing. Um, so first and foremost, uh, we have something called a brand leaderboard report, and um, this brand leaderboard report basically answers your question around. Okay, I have you know certain KPIs that I track uh, for my feedback, um, and I want to know you know how those KPIs work for my competitors as well. Um, so the brand leaderboard report is basically where you can go in to see for each and every brand that you compete with that you have added to your um, you know competitor analysis. Um, you know what do their review volumes look like? what kind of change they are seeing in that review volume, what's the average rating, what kind of change they are seeing in that average rating, um, as well as you know, their rep score. And this is obviously their public rep score. We don't showcase uh, private rep score because a lot of times we don't have that data. So basically, this is where you, know, you figure out that, OK, these are the five or 10 brands that I'm competing with. Um, you know, this is where I lag behind, and this is where I'm leading against them. Um, and then if you wanted to understand the why uh, behind why these brands are leading or why these brands are trailing, um, then we basically you know, break down the rep score for you. Um, so as you know, rep score um, you know, has many multiple factors that is taken into consideration when you calculate rep score. Um, there's review recency, there's review spread, there's review volume. Um, the length of reviews, the sentiment that is expressed in that review. Um, so basically, we break down each and every component for the brand competitors as well, um, so that you can go in and pinpoint and see, okay, you know, they have more review volume, um, they are short in length, so you know, we are doing better there, and that is what is impacting their rep score. Um, and that is also compared against um, the industry average um, as well as the best in class, so you know, you know where you need to be. 
Um, the second one um, is, you know, you want to know where you want to invest your time in getting feedback data. When you're looking for, um, you know, new business, uh, what are the different sources that you need to consider? Um, now, in terms of that, uh, basically what that means is um, you want to see where your competitors are getting, you know, a lot of reviews, and what is that sentiment that is expressed in those reviews, um, so that you know you first of all know that okay, you know, I need to get more visibility in these sources as well. Google is great, but then there are so many more industry-specific sources um, that you also need to focus on. Um, and also, you know, through the sentiment analysis, um, you get a clear picture of you know, whether that competitor is not doing very well in a certain area, and so you can double down your strategy and basically make that a strength of yours. Um, finally, um, in, in experience insights, you know, when you look at your data, um, you can see which categories you're weak in and which categories we, uh, you, know, you are strong in. And we bring in the same kind of competitor data um, for you to basically figure out you know, where your competitors are strong, which categories they are weak in. Um, so basically, you, know, you can put in strategies in place uh, to make their weaknesses your strengths. Um, and also, you know, if you see that they are gaining in certain categories, you know, if their uh, sentiment score has increased over a period of time, um, you know that they pose a threat to your business. So you need to focus more on those as well. Um, so these are the four, uh, you know, strategies that I advocate when you're looking at, you know, how your competitors are doing. And obviously, there's much more to explore there. Uh, but you know, this is something that I always um, ask our um, you know, users to do to figure out how they want to put together a competitor strategy. Something that I liked what you said, and to kind of tie the theme back even still, like when you're getting started with your own insights, right? It's kind of that evolution of, okay, survive into thrive. But then you get into a, a little bit of a maintenance, and yes, there's obviously never <laughs> the end of how far you can grow, but this almost brings it back to basics again, right? Like you said a good point about Google, and yeah, you always want to focus on Google, but maybe in the lens of where your competitors are, that might not be where you need to focus for the next two to three months. Um, so it you know, allows you, I think, to pivot in different ways when before you only had that single view. Um, okay, you also mentioned, and um, this is more something that we'll speak to, um, but we have a lot of awesome things coming with rep score itself, um, such as with you know, your own brand and then also the experience insights and some of the roadmap items that we have coming for that. So I'll let you pick which one you want to talk about first. <laughs> yeah, roadmap items are always my you know, favorite topic. Um, and I'm first going to start with just the vision of our product. Um, and the vision of our product is basically to help our users uh, get meaningful, actionable insights from all the feedback data um, so that they are able to make those data-driven decisions um, they are able to uh, you know, create and set goals around customer experience um, and basically just act faster. Um, the way we do it is through our best-in-class uh, natural language processing engine, uh, which basically analyzes all the feedback data that we um, gather um, to highlight customer pain points, um, you know, show you where your rep score is lagging and the root causes of why it's lagging um, so that you can put together, you know, strategies around how you want to, um, you know, put uh, these things in action to uh, make your business better. Um, now, in terms of the roadmap ahead, uh, we have, a, you know, a large roadmap in place. And I'm not going to go into all of these because I can speak for hours and hours around them. Uh, but um, there are a few that I'm going to pick out. Um, so first and foremost, um, we launched Multi-Location Insights as beta uh, last year in December. Um, and Multi-Location Insights is basically all about getting grouped insights um, on more locations, one or more locations that you manage. Um, so that you are able to figure out, you know, uh, what are the reasons why, you know, the rep score is changing on these locations, and you can also um, look at some recommendations that you can um, execute on, 
you know, all of those locations at the same time. Um, so multi-location insights is, has been in beta for a while now. You know, we've got great feedback, um, and we are planning to make this generally available very soon. Um, secondly, um, on experience insights itself, uh, one thing that you know a lot of our customers mentioned, and this actually came up in the panel uh, discussion yesterday as well, is um, you want to be knowing you know what is in store for you ahead of time, uh, so that you have you know you can plan ahead. Um, and you know how to basically, um, you know, put together a plan around um, how you want to, um, you know, leverage on an opportunity or maybe put out a fire. Um, and so trending categories is all about, you know, highlighting categories that are relevant at any point of time. Um, and that is based on any spikes in review feedback that we see. Um, as well as any big changes that we see in um, sentiment scores for that category. Um, so this is really useful because, uh, you know, using this, you can then put together your strategy around, you know, what is it that you need to do? Um, if it's about fighting fires, then you put together, um, you know, a plan around fixing it. Um, if it's something that, you know, you are happy about, it's trending up actually, um, you want to celebrate it. Uh, you want to, you know, have that as a highlight in your social media content that you're posting, um, as well as create a marketing strategy around it. Um, so that is what trending categories is all about. Um, and this actually gives you a view at a location level as well, so you can see exactly which locations this category is trending up or it's trending down. Um, so, you know, if you need to follow up with a location manager, uh, you know, to put out a fire, you are able to do that in a more proactive manner. So this is all about, you know, making you more proactive by giving you insights in the platform. Um, third, you know, you, you all mentioned um, targets and benchmarks that you set, um, and that is something that comes up often, because once you have rep score, you know, what is it that you do with the rep score, right? Um, if the rep score is low, you want to be, you know, you want to have it at a point where you feel comfortable, you know that you are making progress. Um, and so, um, you know, we are providing that ability in the platform itself. Um, so in the platform now, um, as an integrated experience, um, you know, you should be able to go in and um, create goals and targets around rep score for one or more locations over a period of time. Um, not only that, uh, you would also be able to um, track how you're progressing against those targets, whether you're on track, whether you're off track, uh, drill down at a location level um, so that if there are certain locations that are, you know, you, the expectations are not going to be met, um, you know, they are lagging behind, um, you can basically hone in on them and, you know, focus attention to figure out, you know, what is it that you need to do to make sure that uh, those locations get back on track. Um, so this is targets and um, uh, we are, the team is actively working on it and we plan to um, release it in a beta um, sometime in May of this year. So yeah, um, let us know, you know, get in touch with your CSMs or, you know, ping us on beta at reputation.com if you want to be included in any of these betas because as always, you know, feedback is critical for us. We are in the business of, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, feedback. So uh, I want to make sure that, you know, we get um, enough uh, user feedback before we, um, you know, release this generally. Um, so these are some of the things that, you know, I'm very excited about. In general, our platform is moving more and more towards self-serve. Um, so you have a lot of data, you have a lot of insights in the platform. Sometimes it can get a little unmanageable. And so if you wanted to like, you know, search for a particular insight, um, you, we want to be able to do that using keyword search. Um, and let's say, you know, that produced great results. You're happy with the insights that you're seeing based on the keywords that you're searching. Um, you can save that as a category um, so that you can keep getting insights on them. So this is going to be an extension of the you know, taxonomy that we already support in the platform. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, um, again, around um, self-serve capabilities as well, uh, we are also going to be starting to work towards custom rep score. 
Um, and this is all about, you know, you have your feedback data in the platform, we provide you with a rep score. Now you could have feedback data that's outside of the platform as well, and you want to be able to see how your overall rep score looks like. Um, so a, an ability to basically bring in that external data into the platform um, and then create your own configurations as to you know, how much weighted should be given to that external data as well when it comes to calculating rep score. Um, so yeah, very excited about some of these features and um, yeah, happy to take any uh, questions on you know, any of them. Yes, thank you Raj, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, so just to recap from here, we, if you have any you know, questions or you wanna be involved in the beta, you can reach out to your CSM or reach out to us. Um, I'm gonna be partnering with Raj throughout a lot of these from the marketing side, you know, that feedback loop is really awesome. So with us being here on this last minute, I think that we should you know, see if there's one or two questions and then we're gonna wrap up. Anybody? Okay, well, I saw you and I was like, okay, we might have time for one. Yep.